little green little button next to the red. Hello. You'll come on then. Hey! What a nice lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just we'll just I'll just do the show with the lamp. <laughs> you like that one? That's lovely. That's I lovely. thought I might do the show tonight. Go for it. <laughs> I think I'm just joking. Don't freak out. It's oh, it was right. awesome. oh, it's lovely. It was just a joke. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to show you our little lamp. It's lovely. I'll introduce my husband. Let's <laughs> talk to Mark. How have you I'll been? Talk to you all. Yeah, really good. I like your hair. It looks great. I'm camera shy. <laughs> Turn around sideways and show the back. Yeah, I love it's it. A bit short at the back. A bit short? Yeah. Lift it up. Under here. You had a bit of an undercut. That's funky. Yeah. I like it. Is, is this light bright enough? Uh, I think you'll need the top light. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. You need as much light as you can with the cameras. Really? Yeah. Well, I thought it might have been softer light. No, you need it as much as you can. In fact, when you turn the lights on in the um, garage, does that shine on your face? Through the window, or is it tinted? It's tinted, but I can open the window. Is it, it, is it better if it shines on the face? Yeah, but the, the light from above and the lamp is fine. That's great. Yeah. There hasn't been a, a lighting problem so far. So. Oh, I thought there was, but never mind. Are, Are you, you off daylight saving? Yes. Yes. Well, that must be good. Yeah, it's much better. Back to normal. Just get the kids back into a new routine and... <laughs> yeah, how are they? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. They're good. Put yeah. that lamp on top oh. of the printer. I'll just, put the lamp on top of the try. printer. Just <laughs> try. It's pretty heavy. Alright. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. That's lovely. Mm. Yeah, more on your face. Just realise right. my lamp's not on. There we go. Have you got a lamp? Yeah. I want another lamp. <laughs> You can have spotlights if you want. <laughs> I do. They're up there. <laughs> That's why it gets so hot. They're up there. Would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Victoria Hilton, Chris's wife. And uh, welcome, to Off the Cuff. welcome to Off the Cuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Do, do you want to ask Victoria something? She's all nervous and shy. No, she, I'm going she's now. going international. I haven't had... <laughs> I had dinner, I'm going. This is Chris's show. <laughs> Bye. See you, Victor. Yeah, Ten years done, so it's nothing right. to worry about. I'm nervous. <laughs> She's nervous. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> now, can you see me all right? Yes, I look right. like a blur. No, you're okay on this end. It's fine. Uh, bit sunburned today. Did you? I did, you. <laughs> Out in the front. It was lovely. Yeah. Thanks, darling. Good on you. Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. So how have you been? What's been happening? Uh, not a lot. Uh, just working out new routines, getting the house in order, and yeah. uh, daylight You've saving. you busy mm. doing uh, thingos, haven't you? Yeah. Interviews? Yeah. You've done another one with Colin. Yeah, that's gone online... Uh, Oh, I have to email everybody. I forgot. That went online a couple of hours ago. That would have finished a couple of hours ago. Oh, my goodness. Mm. We you can't keep up with you. Did you watch it already? How would I watch it? I haven't got the link. No, I didn't think so. Mm. Watched all the others. It's been great. Mm. Been fun. Did you have a fun time again? Yeah, we did. But we talked oh, about good. talked about uh, children and how he keeps order in the home and you know things like that, which really interested me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you know, it? So, and uh, how, how much older is he than you? I haven't actually asked him how old he is, but his uh, his children are from eight to sixteen, and my children are from one to seven. So it's uh, mm. total, you know, you're totally younger, so in a different phase of life. Yeah, young kids. So they they were really helpful. Gave me all these tips and pointers on. A deal with young children. He goes into the psychology of punishment and things like that. 
really interesting stuff. Punishment of what? Children. Oh, really? Yeah, the psychology of it. Read books. Read books yeah. and, and things about foster children and all sorts of things, you know. Psychology, so. What well, I'm glad what? I'm up to where I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told Victoria, you know, from now on, I just want to be an observer. Yeah. <laughs> they want any information, we'll, or we, if we need to make a suggestion, we will, but it's better to be an observer. She said, oh, that helped me so much. What a wonderful place to be, and I just want to be an observer. Just sit back and watch and not go through the frustration. Do you remember the fringe? Those 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 bald men with the bowler hats? Bald men with the bowler hats. In the in the fringe. In the Oh yeah, yeah. The, the bald men in the bowler hats that they're called observers. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's what they're well, called. Well, we're looking at it as watchmen. Watchmen, yeah. How about that? Watchmen. It's even better. Bring description. Yeah. Mm. What you got there? <laughs> I can't really read that. All right, here we go. Head, forehead, eyebrows, eyelids, ears and eyes, eyesight, nose, nostrils, mouth, lips, throat, tongue, teeth, voice, brain, mind, blood, beard, breath, language. Oh, we've done all those. Yes, three, the last three we're doing tonight. Last three. Jaw, spit. Is that spit? Yeah, spit. Spat. And smell. Spat. Smell. So how many are there? Three. Three and how many scriptures? Twenty-one. You see that there? Oh, there's twenty-one, and that's just the head. We haven't got out of the head yet. <laughs> I hope it's not too boring for everybody. Me too. Welcome, welcome everybody tonight to Off the Cuff. It's lovely to see you again. Here we go. Ready to go? Here we go. How do you feel? Good. You want to do some brainstorming tonight? Sure. Like I pick your brain or you pick mine? No, both. Oh, fine. We don't have to pick them. Yeah. Just brainstorm together. Mm. We're here together and we can just brainstorm. Just let let come to your mind what's going to come. Mm. You know, only Torah, of course. Yeah. Oh, while well, we're doing show and tell... Show and tell. You're so naughty. Check that out. Oh, that's the one you were telling me about. Hold it up higher. Over to the side a bit more. This side. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, look how small it is. It's like the size it's smaller than my hand. Oh. Stunning. Look, that's my hand. Yeah. And it's got it even came with little candles. That's from Eric. And I got you to do candles too. <laughs> I don't think I want to light. It'd be fabulous for all you little people. I don't want to light the candles; or it'll get wax on it. That's from Eric and uh, Rebecca McGregor. They gave it to us. They gave us this amazing box of stuff. That's wonderful. Amazing. That the um, candle wax will come off easy. Yeah. What do you do to get it off? Do you is just... it is it plastic? No, it's it's brass. I'd say. Brass. I wonder what reminded you of that. I don't know. I had it sitting there because I was going to show somebody and I forgot to show Colin the other day. I have to show somebody. <laughs> See my blind behind me? Oh, yours is wonderful, yeah. Oh, I just said. <laughs> I wonder what reminded you of that. <laughs> yeah, of course. I think that's stunning, mate. Yeah. What colour are the candles? They're not red. No, they're white. Oh, good. They're white. Yeah, they gave us frankincense and they gave us... All these weird balms that you put in your beard and, and uh, textbooks and scriptures and... What are the balms in your beard for? Uh, I don't know. Imagine guess... having balms in your beard. <laughs> well, well... <laughs> hey, beard balm! <laughs> beard balm. Well, Eric's got a big whopper of a beard. The other so. person got going to. <laughs> Eric's you know got what a... the Americans call tramps? What? What are you sitting on? Oh, bums, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you said it. Oh, oh. Mm. Well, you know. Yeah. So we're brainstorming. What about? 
Well, we'll do it as we go. Okay. You know, what do you think? Great. Right, all right. So the first word we're going to look up is jaw. 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 Now, what we want to get also um, is the mindset. We've got to look at the mindset that people were in when we are doing when they were doing this, when these things were written. Don't we? Yeah. We have to look at the time and what the mindset of the people was as we look at it. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. So let's just have a look at that as we go. The first scripture is Proverbs 30. It's Mishlei. You right? Yes, sir. The words of Agur, son of Yuck. How would you pronounce that? Yakel. Yake. Yaki. Yak. Yaki. Yake. Right. The words of Agur, son of Yak. 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 A message. This man declared to Ithiel, to Ithiel and Ukal, for I am more stupid than anyone. Wow. <laughs> and do not have the understanding of a man and have not learned wisdom that I should know the knowledge of the set apart one. So who wrote this? Mishlei, this would be uh, Shlomo. Solomon. Yeah. And what was he given more than other men? Wisdom. More wisdom, and it's written down here. Mm -hmm. So we've been given the shadows of these things, mm -hmm. haven't we? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look, what, how did he end up? <clears throat> uh, idol worshiper. In idolatry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And walked away. Mm -hmm. Crumbled. And what's idol another word for idolatry? Witchcraft, lawlessness, unbelief. Oh. Adul. What? Adul. Adultery, yeah. yeah adultery no. is spiritual adultery. Mm. So there he is. <coughs> He's got all this wisdom and he, and he goes into adultery. Mm. He whores himself to other idols. How does your host feel about that? Hates it. Look what Shalomo did. Hmm. Wow. Look at the mindset he was in. All this wisdom he was given, it just flooded through him, passed through him, the shadows of the wisdom, and he went in another direction. Maybe he didn't understand what he was given, what he got. But he was just given that wisdom by the Spirit in all those circumstances to say all these things. Mm. And then he went the other way. But these are shadows for us, aren't they? Yeah. Shadows and understandings for us. For this time, would you say that? Yeah. So we can look back and we can see how he ended up and we can see the wisdom that's still there that passed through him that was written down and he's gone. I don't know whether he'll have redemption. Mm. We don't know. Mm. But it's total spiritual adultery and he just, he, well, you think of the bride and the bride goes off and whores herself with someone else. Yeah. That's the mindset, isn't it? Mm. They were married to Yahuwah, weren't they? Yeah. And he's doing this right in his face. What do you think of that one? It's 
Scott. brainstorming, keeping the mindset and the time. And we're here now and we're looking at it and there's shadows that we can see. We can see his life was a breath, was a shadow. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And we can, have, we can have the wisdom that went through him. We can have it. But the difference is we can keep it in our heart, guard it, which he didn't do. So it was for, written for us for this time. Would you say that? Yeah. For our mindset, yeah. brainstorming on mindset mm. and the mindset that he was in. Mm. What do you think? How? Why do you think he ended up like he did? I'm just going to turn the fan off. Mm. Have a rave. Um. Oh, any number of reasons. He was. He was the. He was the richest. He was the richest man on the planet as well. Keep that in mind. That's a very good point. Because um, that you, comes into the next stuff. When you've got knowledge and you've got you know, wealth, <coughs> you know, it's harder for a, how's it go? It's harder for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom. Funny that you should say that. Hmm. <coughs> oh, did I jump the gun? Oh. No, it's no. good. Oh. I wouldn't say you jump the gun. I'd say you're flowing because oh. we're brainstorming, you know. Yeah. And you're getting the stuff beforehand because of this brainstorming, you know. You're open to where we're going. Mm. <clears throat> so just look where he ended up. Mm. And so it's obviously that this book is still here. Mm. And it's meant for who? Us. So we learn from all these circumstances. Mm. So we can see, you know, what happened after Solomon um, died. Uh, I'm rusty there. I, just, I don't know. No. What happened after Solomon? I don't know. No. Well, what's what's after Mishlei in the scripture? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Job and Song of Solomon. Esther and Jeremiah. Yeah. What's before it? <coughs> Psalms. Who is King David? David, you got all the all the prophets. Mm. What were they? What were they telling? Israel to repent, come back, and there's Solomon, the prime suspect. Mm. You know, the great, amazing person turns around and becomes an idiot. You know, yeah, it says, For I am more stupid than anyone mm. and do not have the understanding of a man, and I have not learned wisdom that I should know the knowledge of the set apart one who has gone up to the heavens and come down, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has bound the waters in a garment. How amazing. Mm. Their expression back then, how he's bound the waters in a garment. Mm. Well, could you think to say something like that even today? Mm. Who established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? And who wrote this? Solomon. Mm. So what's happening? Look what's happening. Mm. He's prophesying about the future too, isn't he? Mm. You know? About the name. Yeah. What is his name and what is his son's name if you know it? Mm. Way, way back then. <laughs> so the son's coming, isn't he? Mm. Son of Adam. Every word of Eloha is tried, so that means it's gone into the fire. We did that before, didn't we? Mm. So it's perfect. It's been through the testing. You can trust the word. You can trust Yahuwah's word and Yahushua's word. You can trust them. Mm. It's so good to have something that you can rest in and trust mm. in this day, in this, these fleeting days at the moment, this full of technological wonders and amazement, isn't it? Mm. All the theme parks and all the things they're doing for entertainment, it's all amazing. Mm. 
mm. movies and things. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. He is a shield to those taking refuge in him. Oh, yes, let's take refuge in him. Do not add to his words lest he reprove you and you be found a liar. So instruction. We're looking for the word what? I forgot. Uh, <coughs> uh, 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 Jaw. 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 Right. So that was interesting, wasn't it? That yeah. first bit. Mm. Two matters I have asked of you. Deny me them not to me before I die. Remove falsehood and a lying word far from me. He didn't do that, did he? No. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me my portion of bread, lest I become satisfied and deny you and say, Who is Yahuwah? And lest I be poor and steal and seize the name of my Elohim. Do not slander a servant to his master, lest he cursed you and you be found guilty. This is all just instruction and we're looking for the word jaw. There's jaw here in one of the texts. <clears throat> We're just looking as we normally do around where the text of jaw is to see what the teaching is. We're not getting everything perfect, are we? Who can? Verse 11. This is interesting, Mark. There is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. So he's again talking about a generation. There is a generation. Could this be our generation? It's definitely my generation. <clears throat> yeah, verse 12. There is a generation clean in its own eyes, but not, not washed from its own filth. Mm. There is a generation. Oh, how haughty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Mm. So many times Yahuwah Yahu mentions this, he really hates it. Mm. Oh, how haughty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. So we're talking about the body, aren't we? Mm. And how Yahuwah feels about his body and what he wants his body to know about the behaviour. He's very specific about behaviour. That's why I like what Adam said about, you know, if you want to get on his website, you've got to follow the rules. Mm. I mean, it's pretty amazing for a young person to have all those rules. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, how haughty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are? Swords. Now, get an idea. What's a sword? Sharp. A sword is the word, isn't it? Mm. And so it's got teeth, the top teeth are swords, and the bottom teeth, and whose jaw teeth, there's the word jaw, are knives. So you've got swords and knives going together, <laughs> yeah. speaking at you. Mm. And look what they want to do, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Now what are they saying about the population of the world at the moment? <clears throat> yeah. It's yeah. too many. It's too many. They want to destroy people. <laughs> Pardon me, they're trying everything, every, every way they can, chemicals, everything. Look at what's happening to some of the people in the Middle Eastern countries and Africa. Mm. They're just being wiped out and destroyed. Mm. And other countries like China want to ravage them, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Ooh, I've got a visiting moth. <laughs> 
a moth did with did. At verse 15, the leech has two daughters, give, give. You know what a leech does? Just sucks off you. So can you look at that about the generation? Yeah. Just want to use you. Mm. Three are not satisfied. Four that never say enough. Mm. So there's three things and a fourth thing. The grave and the bar and the barren womb. They're never satisfied. The grave's never satisfied once more. Mm. And the barren womb. Oh, that's the most dreadful thing to live with a woman like that. Mm. Soil not satisfied with water. <coughs> Can't hold the water. And fire which never says enough. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. All these things together, Why? how can they relate to us today? How can they relate to the body? Mm. 17. An eye that mocks his father and scorns to obey his mother, ravens of the wadi dig it out there, that's a river or something or a creek, and young eagles eat it. <coughs> Talking about the eyes. Three matters are too marvellous for me and four which I do, do not understand. The way of an eagle in the heavens, it's amazing. The way of a snake on the rock, that's even amazing. The way of a ship in the heart of the sea. <coughs> and the way of a man with a girl. That's the fourth one. He doesn't understand. Mm. This is Solomon saying this to us. Mm. We have to plough through this to get something out of it. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And we're looking at the mindset of where it's come from and how they lived and how they were sacrificing. Mm. Remember the sacrificial laws, the moral laws and the Ten Commandments? Mm. They were going through all that, not really understanding why. They didn't know why they had to wave the sheath, did they, as Lou said? No. But they did it. Mm. They kept it. They didn't know why, you know? Mm. And that's what we're hoping for the older brother to see and accept Yahushua, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. You know, we're hoping that that's going to happen. We're believing and praying because of the parable of the um, prodigal son returning. Yeah. It's just marvellous if you look at all this together, you know. Mm. The way of a man with a girl. Verse 20, this is the way of an adulterous woman. She shall eat and wipe her mouth and say, I've done not, I have not done wickedness. Mm. So she's not guilty, is she? No. Who does that remind you of? Uh, a prostitute or... or a... And who's the great whore? Yeah, the, the beast. The and who, what's the behaviour? See? Yeah, whore. See how you can relate all that? That we know, these shadows that we know, mm. you can relate it and get a deeper understanding. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Under three matters the earth trembles. Now what would they be? Under four it is unable to bear. So the fourth one it is unable to bear it. Under a servant when he reigns, so that means a servant that has no idea, and a fool when he is satisfied with food rather than Yahushua. Under a hated woman who marries, <clears throat> what would she be like to all her friends and families? Mm. And the last one is one that he can't bear, the earth can't bear it, a female servant who supplants her mistress. Mm. So that means takes the place of a female servant which is really not a wife, mm. but a female servant who takes the place of her mistress. Mm. Yeah? What does that remind you of? Um, women? Women? Yeah. Two women? Yeah, yeah the um, Jacob's. Um. In Revelation, <clears throat> 
Two brides. Mm, yeah, the woman riding the beast and the woman with the sun, moon and stars behind her. One's a whore and one's a bride. Mm, yeah. And this is the one that the earth can't bear. Mm. You see that in there? Yeah. So she, she says, I am the bride. Mm. And she's a liar. She's supplanting the true bride. That's why the body has to get it together mm. and manifest itself. <clears throat> yeah? Yeah, totally. Because we're not in unity, the body's not in unity, mm. and she is reigning, the whore is reigning. We're not even a challenge to her yet, mm. are we? No. That's why we're doing this body of work. All different things are going out. Yeah? Yeah. Get the message across. Mm. There are four matters which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The answer of people not, not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. It's wise, isn't it? Mm. The rock badgers are a weak folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. Well, that's a very hard place to live, mm. but they're very clever. Yet they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no sovereign, yet they all go out in formation. Clever. There's no leader, but they all go out that way. A spider takes hold with two hands, doesn't it? Yeah. And is in sovereign's places, palaces. How clever is that little number? <laughs> There are three matters that are going well and four are good in walking. So we're talking about walking. A lion, which is mighty amongst, amongst beasts and does not turn away from facing all. A greyhound and a male goat. <clears throat> What's a greyhound do? Runs fast. It's a hunting dog. Mm. <clears throat> That's what it used to be in those times. And a male goat. Very clever on its feet, it can find a way through anything. If there's a wall or a, or a fence, it'll try and weaken the fence. It's a very intelligent animal, the male goat, mm. the he goat. <coughs> and he'll find a way and he'll, he'll work and work and work and work until he gets through it and overcomes it. Mm. I did not know that. And a sovereign whose army is with him. So they're all walking matters, aren't they? Mm. Running and walking. And here we go. If you have been foolish in lifting up yourself, it's funny how after all that goes into this. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you have plotted evil, put your hand on your mouth. For us, milk under pressure brings forth curds, and a nose under pressure brings forth blood, so wrath under pressure brings forth strife. Mm. So if you've got stuff in there, as a believer, I'm not talking to you, Mark, I'm talking to everyone. Yeah. If we've got stuff in there, as a believer, and, we, and it's not good, and we get pressure on us, we're going to cause strife. Mm. And the body needs to know this. This is from Solomon. Mm. The body needs to know this, needs to know how to behave. You, how to behave. Now, here we have this mindset mm. that they were in back then. They were in all those incredible laws and rules. They had the tabernacle and uh, the sacrifices and the washings and all those things. They were living like that. And this is what comes out of it. Mm. This sort of wisdom comes out of all this stuff that went on back then. And there's shadows for us to look at so we don't make the mistakes that the man that wrote them and said them did. Mm. So it's, it's teaching and education for the body. All these little tiny little things that may not mean anything, but they mean a lot to Yahusha because he's written them there here for us to take in yeah. 
and we should take it serious and take serious what he's saying to all of us, how he wants the bride in the last day. <coughs> now, he has a reign, doesn't he? Yeah. Where does he reign? In men and women's hearts. Right. So what if they die? There's a whole lot of believers and they're wiped out. They go to sleep and they wake up at one of the resurrections. What happens to the rain on earth at that time? If someone like Hitler wipes them out, what happens to the rain? <coughs> but the rain would go too. Where would the rain be? It's wiped out. It's gone. It's waiting for new people to awake. awake well, again. it's up to us to do something about that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What? What's it up to us to do? Spread the seed. Well, you know, if we don't, we there's no fruit. Or what are we talking about? Rain. There's no rain. Yeah. There's no rain. Mm. If the believers get wiped out, mm. there's no rain. Mm. Is there? No. So what Satan want to do? What about the believers? Now, Mark, <clears throat> you might think that what you're doing, you know, isn't important, but who hates you and who would want to destroy you? Satan. And he's planning all the time to destroy you and your family. Are you really aware of that? No, I became very aware of it the last few days. There's been a lot of um, pressure and heated conversations about things and, uh, and with who? with Amy yeah, yeah going through routines and parts of our life that are just chaotic and uh, trying to deal with it and work out everything and um, you have some really heated words and, and uh, <coughs> I just remember um, at one point when we all looked a bit hopeless we were um I just remember this morning that Lou said, Lou said when they went through that, he had to come to the terms of the fact that there was an, an entity trying to come between them, trying to separate them, trying to, you know. And then I just realised, I went, ah, not spot, not spotting the demon, not spotting the enemy in this, just, just, you're just looking at each other. Yeah. Why won't you, why won't you do this? Why won't you do that? And th they just say it back to you, you know, like, why won't you do this? Why don't you do that? Like, you know, and in the end, you just, oh, there's a demon here, you know. So you just yield and, and you love and it goes, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. But, uh, so every believer <coughs> is having this attack in their life. Do you think, you know, we're brainstorming, mate. Mm. We're just looking at these things. We're just looking at from an innocent, pure mind to where we're up to now. Mm. Do you realise that every single believer is under this incredible attack? Yes, I, I did know that. The enemy likes to tell you that you're, you're, you're hideous and you're... You're, you're this and that. Everybody else has got it together except you. But I know that that's not true. I know everybody, to a certain degree, is just a touch fake. Um, everybody's just a touch because nobody wants to air their dirty laundry, you know, particularly on camera or anything. Um, I don't mind a little bit, but, you know, because I don't care. But it's um, everybody's got to go through the same thing, same process. Mm. Were you aware when you were having the heated time with Amy or what no. was really going down? No, no, you're just, you're just looking at the conflicts and you're looking at the problems and you're not, you're not looking, you're not bringing Yahushua into it. So how conscious do you think the body is when you just look at your life? How conscious do you think the body is of what's really happening to them? Well, I look at what's been going on with me the last few weeks. And I'm not giving in, and I'm not, you know, going anywhere, and I'm certainly not going to get rid of my family or my wife, no no matter what we go through, I'm not doing that. And that's me. So I think there's going to be a lot of people who, if they don't, um, you know, face this, 
then that you know Satan will split them apart. That's his goal. So you got to see that it's him. Do you think this is an easy conversation for you to have with your darling? Talk about. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. I could tell her this. I haven't had a chance to yet. I only saw her for half an hour before we started. But so imagine if you both became really aware. Mm -hmm. How much easier it would be mm. just not to go into those places because you know the end of it. Yeah. yeah. The end of it's always divorce, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Everything ends in divorce. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's not even worth going there, is it? No. You know? No. But the body needs to be aware of what's happening to them. Mm. And like you and Amy, most people aren't aware of what's going down. They think they're just having an argument yeah. or a discussion or something, you know what I mean? Mm. But it's not love, is it? No. Yeah. No. So I would really like to encourage you and Amy into having another talk about it and just understanding the attack that's coming on you specifically to destroy you. Mm. to wipe you off the face of the earth. Mm. That's what's happening to every real believer. Mm. Remember that the dragon is going to come after the remnant? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So if you know that you're the remnant, you know the dragon's after you, and you know he can't get you, mm. you feel safe. You don't have to worry about things. You don't need to go into the burden, burden of things. You know, yeah. fears and hurts and upsets and, you know, disappointments. Mm. They're all there for us to overcome. This is what the overcoming is. This is what the body has to do so that they're willing to surrender their life to Yahusha. Because <clears throat> when you surrender your life, you become, as we spoke about the other day, a living sacrifice. Mm. Living means alive, continuous. Mm. You're aware of that. You're going to have his protection. There's no need to worry. Mm. But you are actually, like they're in Africa, they're going after those, those poor tribes and they're just mutilating them and destroying them. People are dying. Children are dying every minute of the day. It's horrendous what's happening in the world. Mm. You know, you've got that going on as well. So but that's how Satan is after us. Yeah. Well, if you can realise, if you can get yourself to realise that, wow, oh, so much better. Yeah. You won't go into those places. And who's going to be screaming their head off? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, spirits. Wouldn't you like to wouldn't you like to affect them? The body needs to affect them so that they can't penetrate. And can't penetrate into the body because he is in the midst of his people. Mm. Satan can't penetrate. Yeah. We have to come to this belief, you know, brainstorming. Mm. We look back at how they were in Solomon's time. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. The mindset they had. Yeah. <clears throat> now we're going to step up to... Um, Luke 18, and we're going to look at spat. Spat. Is this all right? This is great. Yeah. yeah. You got the concept of the mindset they were in? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and he spoke a parable to them that they should always what? Pray. And? Not lose heart. So this is Yahushua talking to his uh, emissaries before they, they were spirit-filled. Yeah? Mm. And this is information. So here we have We've now come up to Yahushua's presence on earth, who is really Yahuwah, isn't he, yeah. in the flesh? Mm. So he's coming 
to do away with something. What's he coming to do away with? Well, he's not doing away with the law. What was he? A blood? He's coming to get rid of the sacrifices. Right. Yeah. Because he always says he wants a circumcised heart. Yeah. So when we go in the water, we get our hearts circumcised, don't we? Yeah. In immersion. Mm. And that's the sort of people he wants that are willing to have that. And the beauty about it is that women can do it. It's not a circumcision in the flesh, is it, like they're having dreadful things they do to women today mm. around the world. Yeah. It's not in the flesh, it's in the heart. Mm. So here he is, he's come and he's changing things, isn't he? Yeah. He's coming to fulfil the shadows. Mm. That's why it's important that we follow the feasts. Yeah. They're all shadows and from partaking of the feasts and doing them and learning about them, we are coming into the mindset that he wants us in now for these last days. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So he gave lots of parables and examples, mm. but they didn't know what he was saying to them all the time, did they? Mm. <clears throat> But as we know the scripture today, we can see the process from the beginning. Mm. You know? Yeah. And he spoke a parable to them and they, that they should always pray and not lose heart. Isn't that wonderful to know when you get burdensome or you think it's hopeless, you know, mm. pray. Yeah. And don't lose heart. Trust. Amazing. Because the word has been tried in the fire, hasn't it? Mm. So it's so true. We can rely on it because it's been perfected. All the ins and outs of those words have been perfected. Mm. You can rely on it. And he said, in a, saying, in a certain city there was a certain judge not fearing Elohim or regarding man. So that's mentioned, isn't it? Mm. Not fearing Elohim or regarding man. And a widow was in that city, and she came to him saying, do right to me on my adversary. So someone's giving her a hell of a time, and she wants this judge to help her. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, reasoning, brainstorming, even if I do not fear Elohim nor regard men, Yet because this widow troubles me, I shall do right to her, lest by her continual coming she... <laughs> Where's me at? And it's to do with the praying, because it said, and he spoke the parable to them, to his emissaries, that they should always pray and not lose heart. So he's giving this example. Because if the woman kept coming and coming and coming to him, he didn't reason it out, She'd uh, wear him out. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And the master said, hear what the unrighteous judge said, so we're going somewhere else now, and shall Elohim do right by all means to his own chosen ones who are crying out day and night to him and being patient over them like the judge was? I say to you that he shall do right to them speedily. But when the son of Adam comes, what does it say? Shall he find the belief on the earth? Now that freaked me right out. That really blew my brains out. So here he is saying when he comes again, they didn't see this, but we can see this. Will he find the belief? on the earth because Satan wants to destroy us all and wear us out so that we give in and we don't stay in the teaching. We don't keep and guard the teaching. Mm. This is what the body has to understand 
all over the world. Mm-hmm. So the body needs to understand to guard the word, to keep the word, mm-hmm. keep it inside ourselves and believe and trust and pray. Otherwise, you get worn out, you lose heart. Yeah. That's and what the thing, eh? That's what they've been doing to Lou and Phyllis. Trying to, yeah. wear, trying to wear them out, shut them up. That's right. That's it. You, you're brainstorming the right way there. Mm-hmm. Now, what is the belief? When he comes back, shall he find the belief? The belief. What is the belief? We need to get it together and simplify it all so that everyone can understand quickly Easily, simply, what is the belief? They can trust in the word. What is the belief, you know? It has to be manifesting. And, of course, it always comes down to one word, doesn't it? Behaviour. No? Um, No, close. Conduct? 1 Corinthians 13. Love, love, yeah. yeah. So by seeing that love manifest, yeah, they'll know that you are my disciples. They see the love you have for one another. And this is the bride manifesting herself. Yeah. He's manifesting himself through his bride. Mm. He's in the midst of her. Mm. That's why it's important that we all get in contact worldwide and we all know each other. And we all come to the one belief and the one understanding. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. We need to know, and I love the way that it's used belief there instead of faith. Mm. You know? The faith's just a mad, crazy word. Yeah. But it's a dead word, I think. Yeah. But will he find the belief on the earth when he comes? Mm. So we need to get it together so that he finds the belief that he's written down, that he came to establish. Mm. Up to here, you can see that um, what had happened to Israel, they'd been divorced and they were scattered into the nations. But he kept a remnant there for his his first coming, Mm. for the Messiah to manifest himself. He kept a remnant there. There's, there must be still a remnant over there that do believe all, all this, mm. you know, and they will probably get out of Israel before everything hits it, mm. you know, but that's the older brother uniting with who? With us, the younger brother. Israel, yeah. Ephraim, Israel, yeah. Ephraim yeah. and Israel mm. uniting mm. together. Mm. So everyone has been scattered, mm. haven't they? Yeah. If you brainstorm this, they were, they've been scattered into the nations. There was a remnant that was brought back to Israel for the Messiah to manifest and give us the instruction. Mm. Right? He stopped the sacrifices mm. and he said he wants circumcised hearts, not in the flesh. Right? Yeah. So there's no more animal sacrifices after Yahusha. Because what happened to the temple? It's destroyed. 70 AD. He said he would do all this. Mm. And what did they do? What did Solomon do? Eventually, what did he end up doing? Idol worship. Spiritual. Adul- adultery. Mm. But he was the bride. Yeah. And he went and double-crossed Yahuwah mm. and went for another idol that man had made mm. and, and ravaged her yeah. because what was in him came under pressure mm. and it caused strife. Yeah. So he lost it all. Mm. But they're shadows for us to look at today. Mm. So if we're summarising all this to get the essence of the belief, the simplicity 
of the belief so that it's not hard to take in, mm -hmm. so that we can spread it easier. Because yeah. it's so there's so many teachings. There's teaching after teaching after teaching. You can just roll along there, but you need a summary. You need a summary. The body today needs a summary because we can't hold the attention of folk for very long, can we? The attention span's not there. So we need a summary so they can see it. They can see the choice that they have. And that Yahushua was very specific and into that. Mm. You know, this is a choice. Bang, 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 bang. Mm. Yeah? yeah? So you're getting an idea of where we're up to now? Yeah. So we've been through all the scriptures and now we're coming into the words of the Messiah, Messianic scriptures. Mm. Right. <clears throat> Will he find the belief on the earth when he comes? That's what we really need to endeavour to get together in a sim simple form that everyone can understand and get it out there and give them the choice. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in the scripture they're given the choice, as you'll see in the next scripture. Mm -hmm. And he spoke this parable to some who relied on themselves that they were righteous, this is verse 9, and looking down on others. So this is for those people. Two men went up to the set-apart place to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. <clears throat> the Pharisee stood and began to pray with, to stu stood and began to pray with himself this way. Elohim, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men, swindlers, unrighteous, adulterers, and even as this text collector. I fast twice a week, I give my tithes of all that I possess. Now, if the temple's gone, is there such a thing as tithes? No. No. Because it was part of the worship. It was part of Israel. Supporting the priests. Yeah. So now that's gone. There's no such thing as tithing, is there? No. But you can help your neighbour. You can help your brother. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But this strict thing that you've got to pay 10% or 20%, mm. if you pay 20%, you get double the blessing. I didn't, I just got ripped off. <laughs> yeah. After the wrong thing. Mm. But the tax collector standing at a distance would not even raise his eyes to the heaven, but was beating his breast saying, Elohim, show favour unto me a sinner. This is the way to come to Elohim. I say to you, this man went down to the house, down to his house declared right because he got relief mm -hmm. rather than the other. For everyone who is exalting himself shall be humbled, and he who is humbling himself shall be exalted. So here we have a, a priest and a tax collector. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I want to say to you that everything that went on in Israel from Solomon before, King David and all that, they reached the pinnacle where he was in their midst. And the covenant was for them. The covenant was for Israel. They were divorced and scattered. Right? Mm. Now, the covenant has changed as far as things like tithing and the... Um, sacrificing, hasn't it? Yeah. That's not in the teaching anymore. But we're still under the moral law, aren't we? Yeah. If we weren't, there'd be no such thing as sin, would there? Yeah. And because that's there, we can see sin. Yeah. So getting that in your mind, that, that covenant was for them, now we're looking at all these shadows, we're looking at all these things 
that did happen. Mm. Yeah? yeah? And Yahushua renewed the covenant for us today. But what went on then had nothing to do with us mm. now, did it? No. They were under a different thing. But the, the different things they were under we need to study because they're shadows of what we learn, what we know today, aren't they? So it's all relevant, but just looking at the mindset of them and what happened to Israel, but we're us now, we're here, we're out, we're, we're scattered. As Lou says, we're still in bondage, but we're coming out. He's coming to us and he's cleansing us out and showing us the way and giving us his new covenant, his renewed covenant. Yeah? So... You know what the Jews are trying to do in Israel? They're trying to build the temple again oh. and bring back the animal sacrifices. Yeah. So the older brother is not understanding mm. the sacrifice of Yahushua. No. Of course, they've all changed his name. Mm. You know? Yeah. So it makes it difficult because of what the Christians have done for the older brother to see the truth. Mm. But through this, he's going to get the truth. And Yahushua's going to do it. But the real covenant, the real Israel, won't exist the way it did with King David and Solomon ever again until we come back down in the new Jerusalem. It's not going to exist till, till then, is it? No. Right? So the Jews over there will get destroyed if they don't move out, won't they? Mm. And see if you summarise all this, you get an understanding of where we're at. Yeah. yeah. And we have a, a different job to do. And that's the job that the, the emissaries had, the disciples. Mm. They went out to spread the word, mm. right? To pass it on to generation after generation so that we get it. And we have to give the word out to the world now, don't we? Yeah. What do you what do you brainstorm from this? Oh. Just just seeing what's going to come against us and seeing what our task is. Uh, like you said, breaking it down simple so it's not uh, that ties in with what you were saying if uh, last week I think about uh, the younger brother is coming back into the covenant, and all those who are, well, we used to, I I used to just think of it as the older brother, like the the Jews. But now I'm also thinking of it. That a lot of messianics are just so, you know, orthodox in their thinking that they kind of come under the same banner as the older brother almost as well. So us common remember, folk, yeah. Remember what I explained about um, Phil Pringle and um, what's his name? Brian the other one, Hillsong. Brian Houston. Um, Brian Houston, yeah. How they came into Sydney, now they've gone worldwide, of course, and they lied to everybody, put them under a false um, um, foundation, told them that they needed to be under a banner, you know. And so he's just cleaned up and split up all the churches mm. and made himself the top dog in Australia and is going, wanting to do it worldwide. Mm. So he's just demented going for this glory, this praise, this, you know, lifting himself up. He's just so entrenched in it all, right? Yeah. Now, would you say that there's people coming from out of that seed that have got frustrated and hurt or something, and they're coming out into the messianic scenes and they want to do a similar thing to what Brian Houston's done. Yeah. This is why they want to squash and kill, lose work mm. and take it over themselves mm. and use his teachings to lift themselves up. But still do it in the same form, in a, maybe a different type of a format, 
than a circus, but still bringing the essence of that into a messianic movement to muddy the waters. Mm. That's why I've always said I'm glad I'm Natsurim, I'm not messianic. Yeah. Oh, to me, it's a different thing. Yeah. You know? But we have to get, you've got all that covered <coughs> the scripture. Mm. Right. Do you want to blow your nose? No, I'm good. We've got all that coming against us mm. to ruin our reputations, to stop the word. And who is that chasing us? Dragon. See? And out of his mouth came a oh, flood God. of water, mm. propaganda. Filth. But the earth swallowed up the water and, and she was safe. Yeah. Right? So that's what we have to understand is going on, is coming at us. I think if you know what the battle is, and the battle is for the, the minds and the hearts of men and women, because that's the reign. But who wants to reign in the hearts of men and women? Yeah, Satan. Satan does. Yeah. And there's only one way to come into Israel through the immersion and get his spirit and die to yourself. Yeah? Yeah. So that the, he can manifest himself through us. Yeah. We have his purpose in mind. That's what we're living for, not our own purpose to have a new land. Yeah. Yeah. You going to sneeze? I'm, yeah, I think I'm about to. <laughs> <laughs> Play your snores. Yeah. Righty. Cut. <laughs> it's fine. So what are you thinking? Now let yourself go and brainstorm. Yeah. What are you thinking? I was thinking it's amazing to break everything down and keep it simple. Um, because the younger brother, us, the daft people, the, the common folk that don't know all that uh, orthodox, a lot of it is just mumbo jumbo. Um, a lot of even the Nazarim are, are, have come out of orthodox, out of Christianity, but they've just gone into the orthodox and sort of using a lot of that dialogue. And um, hey, I'm all for studying Hebrew and finding out the Hebrew means of stuff, but when you're talking to people, I don't know what you're talking about. Just just talk normal. Talk normal, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just like you frustrate people. And uh, it's, um, so I think breaking it down, simple little packages, so people have a choice. And they'll say, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. Or they'll say, you're off your face. Get lost, you know. So the body's got to come right. together. The body's got to come together. Otherwise... Nothing's gonna happen. Mm. I mean, it's all him anyway. He's doing it, but we've they have to be known, don't you think? Yeah. Don't you think they have to be known? It's not a hard thing to Skype, no. is it? No. But I think they need to be known, make themselves known, make themselves committed, mm. make themselves real, and say, "Yeah, let's go. Let's move in this. We believe it's the spirit of Yahusha." Let's move with this. The body needs to recognise itself. Mm. That's why we're bringing all these different parts and we're still in the head, but the body needs to recognise itself through the word. Yeah. See all these little funny little teachings we're getting that don't seem to make much sense, but when you summarise and put it together, what are you seeing? It's very relevant. Yeah? Mm. You think it's easy to comprehend this? Yeah. If it's I mean, looking at the scriptures, you wouldn't think we were going there, would you? No. <laughs> no. Okay, let's go on from verse 15. And they also brought infants to him to touch them, but his taught one, seeing it, rebuked him. So this is Yahusha walking around 
doing all this amazing stuff that nobody on earth had ever done, but it was prophesied. Mm. And there he is doing it. And why he chose 2,000 years ago to do it is interesting too, isn't it? Mm. Why he manifested at that time. That's very interesting. That's something to think about. Mm. Why didn't he do it before or after? Why that time? Yeah? Yeah. And the mindset they had and the clothes, they were, he wanted to use those specific people. He came and chose a remnant, the 12. They were a remnant and they blew the brains off the, off the world. Yeah. Blew the lid. Mm. Mm. You think what they did yeah. after they got his spirit, what's it say to us today? They were all knew each other, didn't they? Yeah. Everything was accredited to and worked out and they worked together as a team and sent letters and they, um, what do we call the word that your folks don't like? Uh, networking. Networking. They networked, mm. didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah? yeah? So do you think that we should follow the example mm. in these last day and age, this mm. last day and age, brothers and sisters out there? Have you thought about getting in contact and making yourself known? It's not hard to Skype anyone, but it would be just wonderful to hear people say, yeah, I'm there. I'm moving with you. You don't have to do it every day, every month, or every six months. You know, we're just when you feel like it. Mm. You've got something to say you want to share. It's just wonderful because we're living in the most exciting time that's ever been. So I don't think we need to be down. If you make up your mind that you're going to overcome and, and through his spirit in you, you will. You'll achieve everything you want. So exciting. It's a happy, wonderful time. Mm. Oh. So there's the um, kids um, wanting to see him and they said, and, but Yahuwah called, um, and they brought infants to him to touch, touch them, but he's taught one, seeing it, rebuked them. But Yahuwah called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the reign of Elohim. So this message is coming along simple and easy. The reign of Elohim. Where is his reign? Where does he want to reign? Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the reign of Elohim as a little child shall what? Certainly not enter into it. Mm. <clears throat> so what would you in enter into it? It has to be a thing that's manifested, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. So the manifestation, when you get immersed, you enter into... Israel. And you become a... Nazari. Citizen. Citizen of Israel, yeah. And you're in covenant relationship with the Creator and you're entitled to the benefits of that covenant. You are dwelling, He is dwelling in our midst. Mm. He's in our hearts. So you have to enter into it, don't you? Yeah. And there has to be love manifesting, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. This is why the body should know itself, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? What do you think of that? Oh, amazing. It's all yeah. about love. Mm. Yeah. 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting life? <laughs> mm. So Yahuwah said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one Elohim. No one is good except one. Elohim. You know the commands, do not commit adultery. Look at the first one he says. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
He chose that one first because that really affects him. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to be unfaithful. Do you want to be unfaithful, Mark? Oh, no, no way. Oh, we want to be faithful. Mm. Look how he feels and we can hurt him so much. Mm. Oh, let's not go there. Do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Respect your father and your mother. And he said, all these I have watched over from my youth. And hearing this, Yahuwah said to him, yet one you lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? And come follow me. That was his particular test, I would say. Mm. But when he heard this, he became intensely sad, for he was extremely rich. And when Yahuwah saw that he became intensely sad, he said, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter into the reign of Elohim? Mm. To have riches, it's hard to enter into the reign of Elohim. Because yeah. they don't want to give up and help. They want to keep it. Yeah. For it is easy for a camel to enter through, there you are, a needle's eye, than for a rich man to enter into the reign of El the reign of Elohim. Where is the reign? What is the reign? What is the belief that he wants to find on earth when he comes back? Will the Son of Man find it? They didn't know what the hell he meant when he's saying the Son of Man, did they? No. The son of Adam, mm. but it's all in scripture. Mm. Obviously, they like today, they didn't know the scriptures, like a lot of Nazarim don't know the scriptures today, don't have the mindset. Yeah, mm. we need to have that mindset that the two tribes are going to become one, we need the two sticks are going to be joined, we need to understand that just opens up so much in your life and gives you so much understanding. That's what Israel did. And it's a shadow for us to look at everything that Yahuwah gave them to do and they turned and went into idolatry. Mm. After seeing all the miracles and the wonderful things, yet they found other things, Christmas and all those other little bunny rabbits and stuff, they found all that more exciting, how childish then. <coughs> Yahusha. Yeah. And those who heard heard it said, who is able to be saved? Look at his wonderful answer. And he said, what is impossible with men is possible with Elohim. Mm. It's true. That man could have changed his mind. Yeah. He could have just blessed everyone and had treasure in heaven for himself, yeah. couldn't he? Yeah. Mm. 28, and Kepha said, See, we have left all and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the reign of Elohim. Yeah? Mm. Who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come, Everlasting life. <clears throat> oh, how wonderful. Mm. So you're going to get back all brothers and sisters. And talking to the 12, taking the 12 aside, he said to them, so he got the, dis the disciples, took them aside, and he's saying, see, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all that has, and all that has, and all that have been written by the prophets about the son of Adam shall be accomplished. How amazing is that? Mm. They didn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but after they got the spirit, they would see, wouldn't they? Yeah. For he shall be delivered up to the Gentiles and shall be mocked and insulted and spat upon. There's the word, mm. spat. We're getting all this from the word spat. spat. <laughs> yeah. And having flogged him, they shall kill him, and on the third day he shall rise again. But they understood none of this. 
And this word was hidden from them, and they did not know what was being said. Hey? They didn't have, they didn't have a clue. After they got the Spirit, of course, they understood, didn't they? Yeah. But there he was, the actual real Messiah, right in front of them, doing all these amazing things. They knew it was the Messiah. They didn't know what the hell he was talking about. He's talking about Scripture. He's talking about his Word, what he's going to do mm. and what he did do and the covenant from, from Moses way back then coming out of Mithraim, mm. right? Yeah. And all, everything there, he was there. through. He went all through that. He was there. It all happened. And there he is in the flesh, the creator in the flesh as his own son. But it's really Yahuwah. Elohim, walking amongst his people, imagine being there and having the knowledge of this. We can have this knowledge, but we can, because the word is tried in the fire, we know we can see the prophecy said he's going to come back. We can trust that. If we die before he comes back, we still go to the grave knowing that we've done the best we can. You know, yeah. we've got to get the word out, haven't we? We've got to get the story, the simplicity of it all out. Mm. It's got to get out there so people can say, oh, wow, fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Verse 35, and it came to be that as he was coming near Yeraho, that a certain blind man was sitting by the way begging and hearing a crowd passing by, he asked what it meant. And they reported to him that Yahuwah, Yahushua of Nazareth, was passing by and he cried out saying, Yahushua, son of David, have compassion of me. And those going forth before him were re shh, rebuking him that he should be silent. But he was crying out much more, son of David, have compassion on me. And Yahushua stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you wish me to do for you? That's what he's saying to us today. Wow. And he said, Master, receive, receive my sight. And Yahushua said to him, Receive your sight. Your what has saved you? Your belief, belief. has saved you. Your belief. He's wanting our belief. Will I find the belief on the earth when I come? He wants our belief, our trust, our made up our mindness hmm. that this is true. Otherwise, you cannot express it if you don't believe it. Hmm. You know? It's not just religious knowledge, this is a truth. This is a real experience. He wants this experience with us. And not only did he receive his sight, but he said, your belief has saved you. Mm -hmm. wow. And immediately he received his sight and was following him, praising Elohim, and all the people seeing it gave praise to Elohim. Wouldn't you? Oh. Give him praise to Elohim. Who's Elohim? Yahuwah, Yahusha. There he is. Mm. They're giving praise to Elohim, but there he is. Yeah. Right before them. Yeah. Yeah? Are we too long? Oh, wonderful. It's been an hour and a half. We do one more. Yeah. We better get through it. Yeah. It's smell. Yep. Leviticus 26. And what I'm going to do is just run through this and then we can brainstorm, yeah? Yeah. Do not make idols for yourselves. What word are we looking for? Smell. Smell. This is in the head. 
So this is a teaching that we just look up the word smell, pick out one of the scriptures and just, and there's many, many, many studies like this you could do if you wanted to do. Mm. If you stay in the right mindset while you're going through it, the mm. two tribes are going to become one. Mm. Very important. The older brother is going to join with the younger brother. This is the instruction from um, Moses, Moshe. This is uh, what he gave, Yahuwah gave him to give to the people. Now, Moshe already knew that what was going to happen. Remember Yahuwah told him? Mm. He already knew that they were all going to fail. Do not make idols for yourselves and do not set up a carved image or a pillar for yourself and do not make a place stone and do not place a stone image in your land to bow down to it for I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Guard my Sabbath and reverence my set apart place. I am Yahuwah. So he wants us to do the feast, the Sabbath, yeah? you walk in my laws and guard my commands and shall do them, then I shall give you rain in its season and the land shall yield its crops and the trees of the field yield their fruit. Now imagine being given that. <laughs> this is part of the covenant they were under. This is what he gave them. Yeah. No worries, no problems. They actually achieved this. Mm. He actually made it a reality. He chose the right people. Mm. When he came to earth, he just went out randomly and chose these people, these 12 em emissaries. But they weren't, were they? No. They were his plan. Like today, you've been chosen, but you don't know why, but you just want to follow. That's how they all were. They just wanted to follow and see mm. what he was going to do next, yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And if, you know, you pray and ask for your sight, you'll see yeah. what he's doing. Mm. And your threshing shall last till the time of the grape harvest, and the grape harvest shall last till the time of sowing. So it's just continuous blessing. And you shall eat your bread until you have enough and shall dwell in your land safely. How wonderful. Can't do that today. And I shall give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no one make you afraid. Can't do that today. And I shall clear the land of evil beasts, and not let the sword go through your land. How wonderful. Mm. You shall pursue your enemies, and they shall fall by the sword before you. And five of you shall pursue a hundred, and a hundred of you pursue ten thousand. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. And I shall turn you and make you bear fruit and shall increase you and shall establish my covenant with you. You shall eat the old supply and clear out the old because of the new. And I shall set my dwelling place in your midst and my being shall not reject you. Mm. How wonderful is all this? Yeah. And I shall walk in your midst and shall be your Elohim and you shall be my people. Mm. What a promise. This is what Moshe told them if they would follow his rules mm. because they're all health for us. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from being their slaves. And I have, I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright. Yeah. You walk upright in Yahusha. Hallelujah. Mm. But if you do not obey me and do not do all these commands, and if you reject my laws, or if your being loathes my right rulings, if your being loathes my right rulings, is this what's happened in the world today? Yeah. Is this how they feel? Yeah. yeah. Horrific. So that you do not all not do all my commands, but break my covenant. I sh also do this to you. I shall appoint sudden alarm over you, wasting disease and inflammation, destroying the eyes and consuming the life. And you shall sow your seed in vain, 
for your enemy shall eat it. Mm. This is the opposite yeah. to the blessing. Mm. And I shall set my face, because they need to get people committed. Mm. People stay out there in computer land and they won't commit. They'll have their little looks and little comments. They won't make themselves known and they're not willing to commit. Mm. And Yahushua wants a body that's committed, that knows each other. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. It's Amazing. essential. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So the love can manifest. Mm. You know? Yeah. Look at the people we're finding and discovering. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Who you're talking to. It's just lovely. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. And I, verse 17, I shall set my face against you and you shall be smitten before your enemies and those who hate you shall rule over you and you shall flee when no one pursues you because you're that freaked out. Hmm. Did this happen to Israel? Yeah. All this happened. Hmm. They were divorced and this is what happened to them. Hmm. They were scattered into the nations and lost everything. Their enemies you know, mm. we're controlling them. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I shall punish you seven times more for your sins. This is the agreement. Mm. You know, he wants people that are going to say, yes, I believe, I love you, I can see what you've done. Thank you for delivering us. I can walk upright. Now I think it's my turn to be committed. And I think, brothers and sisters out there, you little tapeworms, I think it's time that you started to realise, yeah, I don't need to just be out there having little goes of people left, right and centre. I need to make myself known. I think it's vital and essential that we all know each other mm. as much as possible. Mm. <clears throat> so I don't want to get seven times, eh? No. And I shall break the, break the pride of your power and shall make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze. What's Israel look like now? Is it a fertile nation? No. Mm. And your strength shall be spent in vain, and your land not yield its crops, nor the trees of the land yield their fruit. And this all did happen to Israel. Why, Mark? Adultery. Idolatry, adultery. Saturnalia, mm. yeah, yeah, worshiping those bunny rabbit idols. Mm. And if you walk contrary to me and refuse to obey me, I shall bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins. This is what's happening. Mm. And send wild beasts amongst you, which shall bereave you of your children. Imagine having that happen. Yeah. Animals coming and taking your children. Mm. And I shall cut off your livestock and make you few in number, and your highways shall be deserted. This all has happened to Israel. Mm. And they still stand there stubbornly saying, we are the chosen ones. Mm. But there's not. They're not. Mm. But there is a remnant within those people that are going to wake up. Mm. They're going to receive their sight when they accept Yahushua. Mm. Remember the blind man sitting there mm. yelling out to Yahushua? Mm -hmm. The older brother has to yell out to Yahushua. Mm. So they get saved and they receive their sight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? And if you are not instructed by me, that's verse 23, by these but walk contrary to me, then I also shall walk contrary to you, and I myself shall smite you seven times for your sins. And I shall bring against you a sword, executing the vengeance of my covenant. The vengeance of my covenant. Hmm. The vengeance of my covenant. Woohoo! You shall gather together in your cities, and I shall send pestilence among you, and you shall be given into the land of the enemy. <coughs> When I have cut off your supply of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall bring back to you your bread by weight and you shall eat and not be satisfied. 
And if in spite of this you do not obey me but walk contrary to me, then I shall walk contrary to you in wrath. And I myself shall punish you seven times for your sins. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons and eat the flesh of your daughters. And I shall destroy your high places and cut down your sun pillars and put your carcasses on the carcass of your idols. And my being shall loathe you. Imagine Yahuwah's being loathing us. This all happened to Israel, Mark. Yeah. Still we weren't there. Mm. But we've grown up in the sins that were passed on from them, mm. from Adam. Yeah. Yeah. And we've known the suffering and the pain of the sin, mm. don't we? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and our brothers and sisters should realise that's why the suffering and the pain and the calamities are in their lives. Mm. We have to overcome these sins. You read something like this and you can see what they did. Mm. Now, a lot of Christians try to make a message out of this. <coughs> but we have the, <coughs> we know the history of the two sticks going to become one. We know this is what Israel did. They were divorced for this, scattered into the nations. We're the remnant that is calling out. Mm. <coughs> Listen as we go on. I shall turn your cities into ruins. Didn't that happen to Israel? Yep. And lay your set-apart places waste and not... I just lost my spot. Verse 31. 31. And not... Smell. Yeah, there's the mm. word smell. Your sweet fragrances. Mm. See the word smell? That's in the head. Yeah. And we're getting this teaching around this word. Mm. And I shall lay the land waste and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. And I shall scatter you among the Gentiles. Ha ha! Mm. Look at that. And draw out a sword after you. And when you read it with the right mindset, don't you understand it more? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Your land shall be desert and your cities ruins. And the land enjoy its Sabbath as long as it lies waste, and you are in your, and you <coughs> are in your enemy's land. <coughs> We're still in captivity. Mm. Israel is enjoying its um, Sabbath. Mm. Then the land would rest and enjoy its Sabbath as long as it lies waste. It rests for the time it did not rest on your Sabbath when you dwelt in it. So there'd be many years they dwelt in it and has to recover many years. Mm. And as for those of you who are left, I shall send faintness into your hearts in the lands of their enemies and the sound of a shaken leaf shall cause them to flee. <laughs> so they'd be so freaked out just by a leaf. Yeah. And they, imagine having that inside, it'd be hideous. Mm. They shall flee as, as though retreating from a sword and they shall fall uh, when no one pursues. And they shall stumble over one another as from before a sword where no one pursues. See? And you shall be unable to stand before your enemies. You shall perish among the Gentiles and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. See, it says, and you shall, um, you shall not be able to, you shall be unable to stand before your enemies. Remember that line in Proverbs, how it could stand before anyone? Mm. We've got to be like that lion mm. <clears throat> because we believe the word. Death doesn't matter. Mm. But the word is so tried and tested, we can believe it. We can rest on it. Yeah. And we also have the experience of his presence within our hearts. Mm. So he's going to reign in our hearts, isn't he? You shall perish among the Gentiles, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And those of you who are left not rot away in their crookedness in, in your enemies' lands. What's happened to the Jews? Yep. Look at history and Hitler and all that. Mm. And also in their father's crooked crookedness, rot away with them. See, the, all that was passed on seven times. That's why the Jews copped it all. 
because they're getting punished because they're still into idolatry even today you know the curly and the boom de boom de boom de boom the little hat on de dum de dum all that stuff the prayers in the wall oh please well, how childish is that when you can actually have a real communication you don't have to go and dress in black and wear a hat and nod, nod your head and look pious Remember the tax collector and the priest, the Pharisee? They're like a bunch of Pharisees over there. How ridiculous. And they're saying that is, that is how wonderful Yahuwah is. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. That's just pathetic. That's bringing everything down to man's. How foolish are they? Oh, the older brother really needs to wake up because it's in his scripture, isn't it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if this got to them? They could see. Verse 40. But if they confess their crookedness and the crookedness of their fathers uh, with their trespass in which they trespass against me, and and that they sorry, and that they also have walked contrary to me. See, they've done all that, haven't they? They're still doing it, Mark. Still there banging their heads. And that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if their uncircumcised heart is then humbled. Mm. Hey, this is what the older brother needs to do. This is what he has, an uncircumcised heart. Mm. And it needs to be humbled. Mm. He needs to cry out to Yahushua so he can see. Get, his, get saved and get his blindness mm. cured. Mm. Hey? Amazing. So if their uncircumcised heart is then humbled and they accept the punishment of their crookedness, they've got to accept that Yahushua has punished them. Mm. You see the Jews doing that now? No. Then I shall remember my covenant. He will remember it with ya- Yaakov and also my covenant with Yitzhak and also remember my covenant with Abraham, remember the land, the land. See, he dwelt in the land. They had all the, all the temple sacrifices and everything happening. The whole belief system was happening in King David and Solomon's time, wasn't it? Mm. His reign was there. He was in the midst of his people. It was wonderful. It was happening, what he planned, what he wanted. But it's a shadow. And we can see our failures just in our own personal life when we look at what happened to them. Mm. But now we know the key is idolatry. Mm. Adultery, you know. Mm. We know that's a key not to go to. We reject all those um, festivals, you know. For the land was abandoned by them and enjoyed its Sabbath while lying waste without them. And they were paying for their crookedness because they rejected my right rules and because their being loathed my laws. Now after seeing everything and knowing the knowledge and the experience of him, they turned around and they loathed his laws. Look how important and valuable it is to us today to know these things and to be learning about the feast and applying them and just getting the knowledge of everything coming together. What you and Lou went through, oh, what about all the things Lou said the other day? Wasn't that just amazing? Mm. He's such a wonderful man. Keep going, Lou, don't give in. Mm. Verse 44, and yet... For all this, when they are when they are in the land of their enemies, I shall not reject them, nor shall I loathe them, so as to destroy them and break my covenant for with them. For I am Yahuwah their Elohim, which means it's our Elohim. Then I shall remember for their sake the covenant of the ancestors who are brought out of the land of Mitzrayim before the eyes of the nations to be their Elohim. I am Yahuwah. These are the laws and right rulings of the Torah, which Yahuwah made between himself and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. So that's what they did. 
They actually turned on him and went went against him. Yeah. And so he divorced them and scattered them into the nations. Mm. They haven't come back together yet. What Israel was is going to become again, but much better, and he's going to be dwelling in the midst of his people. Mm. Before, when he comes, the second return, we go up to meet him in the sky, then the, everything's scorched, and then he brings down the new Jerusalem, mm. the city, and then his reign is going to rule for a thousand years on earth and peace. No hassles, worries, sickness, death, nothing. You're going to look like you were when you were young. Mm. How amazing is this going to be? How wonderful. Mm. Look what the world's trying to do to you to destroy you and your wife and your life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You've followed all sorts of unreasonable things and you can see mm. now. Yeah. But we're in this mindset. This is what Israel did. This is the story. They've been scattered. The older brother has got to see Yahushua and cry out to him, mm. hasn't he? Yeah. Come out of all the silliness, all the religious stuff. Mm. Yeah. Normal. And run for his life and get out of Jerusalem, get out of Israel before it's blown up. Mm. Because the real Israel is the body that's all over the world. It's yeah. a body of people. That's his bride. The real, he always wanted Israel as a bride, made a covenant with them. And he's calling all those people out now mm. to be his bride. And he's cleaning them up and preparing. We're getting prepared. He does the lot. He does everything. So the people that called out are precious. Mm. He's doing it. He's moving. Mm. Eh? Yeah. You can see this happen. We cry out and ask for his help. He'll open our eyes. Mm. Well. Okay, mate. Brainstorm to you now. What are you going to say? Oh, wonderful. It's all so true. It's, uh, it occurred to me this morning as well that um, we're about to come into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You remember a few years ago back you said uh, that uh, because this went over my head at the time because we were always arguing all the time amongst ourselves but you kept saying to me um, around the time of Passover you know we always start arguing this is what you were saying you start arguing and having more arguments you know and, and I thought oh that's interesting didn't think much about it and then it's been pretty cool lately and um, just the last few days Argument and uh, it didn't occur to me till today. We're, we're coming into unleavened bread. He's uh, revealing the things that he doesn't want. The leaven. Yeah. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. You know, mm -hmm. drawing my attention to the amount of time I was spending in here and not spending and caring about what's going on out there with the family. That's not good. And uh, the children are getting older. And. Uh, so that's good to, to face, and uh, I, I didn't, just didn't, um, hadn't really faced it myself how upset or shaken I'd been when I had to take everything off YouTube. I, I hadn't, um, I felt like I'd sort of failed. I thought, well, I thought I'd been flying with the for the last two or three years. So, so now you're saying I'm, I wasn't. <laughs> um, it's just all gone. You know how many? You know how many hours? of, you know, neglect of my family that, that was, uh, and it's all gone. And um, so that really shook me. So I've just been going overtime, triple time, mm -hmm. trying to get another body of work <laughs> uh, together. And I'm happy with where it's at right now. It, and, uh, How do you think Phyllis feels she, yeah, about she, lose she, time? It would be the same. Because he's dedicated his life to helping it, all and everybody. Well, I think um, Amy should talk to Phyllis about this mm. when she does a, a thing. Uh, and I think um, Phyllis has come to an understanding mm. of the, the essential work that you're both doing. Mm. And I mm. think Amy could come to a good understanding as well. 
Yeah. I mean, you love your kids and, you, you, you know, you're there and she's there. Mm. But I think now you've got yourself through the hard work and you know what you're doing mm. now. Yeah. And you find it very easy to talk to people. And you can do it, you're doing some in your own time at work, I see that, mm. you know. Mm. And uh, maybe if you did things like that and you can talk Lou into doing that as well, mm. I'm, I mean, you can't, can you? He can only do it on certain days, can't he? Yeah, he's got a lot on his plate. He's just pulled back to uh, one tour talk a month now, which is fine, which is actually a lot. Well, that's good. It's a well, you've both put a lot out, haven't you? You've both yeah. been through a lot. So mm. then you've got Colin coming in. Mm. And, you know, I think I think um, things will, you know, even out now. Yeah. And you can organise it because you both you and Lou have got a fabulous body of work out there now, mm. you know, and they can just keep going from there. Mm. But... Uh, you know, the women have to understand the dedication. Mm. Um, if you're called and your hosha wants you, what happened to the emissaries? Mm. What did they do? They went. And what about their husband, their wives and their children? I'm not sure if they went with them or what. Does, doesn't sound, not in the movies I saw, didn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, yeah. there's a, a commitment and a dedication mm. that needs to be understood. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all from both ends. Mm. And I think um, the whole thing's happened and it's a positive, it's a blessing. Mm. If you look at it as a blessing, you've worked something out. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the commitment, as you know, all your life since we've been doing this, my wife's been through the same thing. But my wife's changed now, hasn't she? Mm. Yeah. She, it's not an imposition to her anymore. She knows the commitment. She wants to back it up, mm. you know? Yeah. So uh, maybe you can... Let Amy see this or talk to her about it as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm. If she can, you know. Mm. Yeah, for sure. See? Mm. Yeah. Mm. But I think the main thing, one of the main things is the chores. Mm. That's probably overwhelming. Mm. Washing the ironing and the cleaning. Mm. I think that would be overwhelming. Yeah, so we both just work. So if you could work out a system to get in there and buzz around where the cooking, washing, ironing at those times, mm. make sure that you're available for that mm. and at a certain time for the kids and then after, after they've gone to bed, well, if you do something like this, it's only a couple of hours, you can do the show, go to bed, get up the next day or whenever and you've got time to, work, you know, go over it and fix it up. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. Just getting routines together. Yeah. 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 But if you have the understanding that we've talked about tonight, mm. yeah. yeah, if the rain, if the person dies and it's not passed on or a whole bunch of us get knocked out, yeah, that's what this body of work is to be on YouTube. Four. Yeah. Mm. You know, if we get if we get knocked out, the website's probably still there. There'll be someone to keep those things going. Mm. But the words out there in the airwaves now. Mm. These understandings are coming out of the airwaves. Mm. You know? yeah. We really need to understand what the commitment is. Mm. And a commitment is What? The commitment is, is... Present your bodies as a... Living sacrifice. 
Mm. So he wants your whole time eventually when you can give it. Mm. But of course, you know, mm. you've got the wife there to train the kids and help the kids and, mm. you know, it's a lovely thing. Mm. It should be a lovely thing and Colin's given you some help there, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm. And there are times when you can organise this but you're still not letting your husha down. Mm. Just so long as Amy understands the commitment and what the whole thing's all about, mm. you know? Mm. I don't think there'd be a problem if you explained it to her no. in, this, in this way. No, and loves it. She, she has the understanding that we talked about tonight? Not quite, no, and I haven't shown any kind of love in that area. It's, it's been very stressful lately so it's when, the, when there's not love then everything gets chaotic you know it's got to be love well there's obviously love between the two of you mm. i know you know you've just got to explain to her how you've committed your life mm. i'm sure lou's done that yeah you know everyone in my house knows when we do this you know mm. don't make noise because i'm in the, this room and the rest of the house is closed off you know, don't make noise, um, respect what's happening and, you know, da di da mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. But they're good. So, you know, it all comes down to the overcoming, Mark. Yeah. And the cleaning out. Mm. See, we're, we're the bride, we're the bride now. All that has happened, you know, what he did to Israel. Then he came in the flesh and he changed the rules a bit. No more tithing, no more sacrifices, circumcised hearts. He's always wanted that. Yeah? yeah? The heart where he reigns, he wants it soft and loving and kind and, and not nasty and angry. See? So you have to overcome the anger between the two of you and discuss everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what everyone has to do in the body. Yeah. So look at that. We've got 21 points and we're still in the head. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's happening, isn't it? Mm. You want to say anything else? No, I'm very happy with that. That's great, mate. Yeah. Mm. All right, mate. I hope it's successful. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We'll just get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the important thing, isn't it? Mm. These things are being said. Mm. Yeah. All right, mate. Love you. Love you too. Hope you all had a good night. We did. Yeah. See you, mate. See ya.